getting congested. Players are not cutting continuously, and this one they get not quite, not quite. And I spoke too soon as usual. But you know, they're, they're actually getting good shots. They've gotten a lot of looks close to the basket, the, but the finishing has left a lot to be desired. We've got a third second time of the jong -Yuch. Is it the pull? Okay. It's a pull. Madalina Mataika was up here. Good size opening uh, day crowd for the quarterfinals. Treated to two great games and don't forget that Haynes is the official underwear of the PBA. Just a quick reminder, earlier tonight we had BMEG with James Yap uh, firing away with uh, 31 points. Four assists. Completo in and out and four of ten from three point distance and just nailing it. Uh, Although non dulo, si Simon yung dumiliver ng malaki. Actually, Roger Yap had a big three and uh, PJ Simon, both of them had big threes. Oh. That three-point shot, actually uh, key for uh, BMEG Derby Ace, especially in the fourth quarter where they hit five three-point shots. And now, back to this one, down to the final 55 seconds. This offensive set down to its last six. Cortez slipping. Time out. Yeah, I think they're going to call yeah. Eli Tenorio for this foul. Oh, uh -huh. This first, just the second team foul, so fouls to spare by Ala for Alaska, rather. rather. Actually, it's the two teams that uh, These are the two teams that fouls the least in terms of uh, uh, league average. Actually, pinagkakatiwalaan nila yung quickness nila, sundutin yung ball eh. In the meantime, the Vance defying uh, the attempt of Cortez to hit him with a steal from the blind side. Tenorio loves doing this and everything is still unset to fire this three. Well, Eli Tenorio going for a two-for-one situation there, just so that they have some time back, but then took it a little too late. Feeling more late? Well, late. because there's only one second ah, differential. So the terms of time, and right? Three, no. Tim Kwan says, I'm not calling anything. We go, go, go. Should be interesting how the coaches will size up this low scoring first half, which Alaska leads 34 to 30. Parang ano no, dalawang buksanyerong nasa gitna ng laban, nagtapan siyaan pa rin. And Gino Rufino is quickly with look, L.A. Tenori. Like I said, L.A. Tenori, 6 points, 4 rebounds so far. Birthday boy, L.A. Uh, sabi, nga ni, uh, sabi nga ni Coach Tim Cohn, it's about, it's about tempo, tempo, and more tempo. Right now, it's 34-30. Ito ba yung tempo yung gusto ng Alaska? Uh, nandun kami, pero kulang pa eh. We're still uh, struggling, especially sa offensive side, so... Kailangan pa namin ma, ma, ma meet yung tempo na gusto namin. Alright, what do you need to do in the second half in order to keep this up and in order to finish off the Mavericks? We have to limit them, sa, especially sa transition nila. That's the number one weapon eh. So, we, ano, we make a stop in the transition. I think we have a good chance na manalo kami sa game natin. Alright, LA, happy birthday and good luck sa second half. Alright, uh, keep it here on Solar TV as Seb and Jason break down the first half of this game. They played each other so long through the history of the PGA, but in this game it looks like they're starting over as they're trying to feel each other out. The low scoring first half play, both dropping for form at certain junctures of the ball game, but it should pick up in the second half. But Alaska were the early four point lead days. Well, you know, defensively, uh, they talk about the offense of Ginebra and they talk about the uh, set the offense of Alaska, but defensively, they've always been very sound teams and they made uh, the other team suffer especially field goal percentage-wise in this game, and they've done it to each other. Okay. Web page. Pasok natin ang Alaska perspective para kay uh, Jason. Uh, silipin muna natin sa Alaska. Ano ba sinabi natin? Slow and steady for Alaska. This was the one that uh, Coach Tim Cohn was talking about. It's all about tempo. You see the amount of points scored on the fast break? A total of four divided between the two of them. Only two points each for both teams. So you can see that the tempo really going the way of Alaska so far in the game. Then we said it has to be showtime for LA. He's done very well. He's with the best 
local scorer for his team with six points and also get, getting four rebounds which is a big plus from that point guard position and points under pressure I think they've controlled this game very well in a sense that uh, they have not allowed the crowd to get too involved in this game coach Tim Cohn doing a magical job or a magnificent job of making sure that the runs of Barangay Ginebra doesn't get the teams, the crowd excited in the game. Doesn't stay very long. On the other hand, let's flip it over to the webpage of Ginebra. Para naman sa Barangay Ginebra, sabi nga natin kanina, ang kailangan nila gawin is they have to go deep. But so far, in their in terms of bench points, yes, they've gotten 10 points. But out of that 10, 6 points came from Sunday Salvacion. And then you look at it down the road, Rudy Hatfield, scoreless. Eric Meck, scoreless. Kagiwa, zero. Miller, zero. And then Rico Villanueva, zero. So, you know, that vaunted depth of their team, unable to be used so far in this game. Those guys, some big names, some of them MVPs, still scoreless in this game. And then next up, they have to share the wealth. Yes, they've had six assists, but we talked about it during the game. There have many, we've seen many instances in this game where they have failed to move that basketball. And we get uh, quickly into the business of the third quarter. Seth Sarmanta, Jason Webb, and Gino Rufina taking care of your second game tonight. Francis Opilio is our director, of course. Got Mike San Juan with us here alongside uh, Roy Lopez, our statistician. 11.46 to go as we are just starting. <coughs> Excuse me, here. Parang yung uh, drama button ng uh, Ginebra, hindi pa napipindot. Ano? There were some uh, moments where it would start. But they're hopeful that the DY and company can get it going. Well, here's one guy that can really get the crowd excited, especially by the way he scores. That's a good omen for Barangay Ginebra if Mark Pagiwa gets that shot in. 34 to 32. Tenoria dropping it over now to... Jody Vance. Vance is getting his points from every which way. There's a foul after the basket, though. Yeah, they're they're going to call the flopping, flopping, call, warning, yeah, yeah. flopping warning here. And they called it at the right time because Alaska had the advantage on offense and they didn't, the referees did not stop the play right there and then. That allowed Alaska to get the two points, but yet that also gave them the opportunity to call the flopping. And let's set it to a man who just stepped out of GQ. That's to what GQ is, I'll tell you later. Gino Rufino. <laughs> Thanks, Chef. I uh, spoke to uh, Ginebra assistant coach Juno Soler um, earlier uh, during the, the break, and he told me that they have to communicate on defense. They sometimes switch from man to man and zone, and every now and then you see players playing man and playing zone, so they have to be all on the same page. On offense, they need to get out of transition more. If Alaska gets back on D, they have to beat the post, guys. Thanks a lot. Of course, you did step out of gentlemen's quarterly like Helter Brown did so. You know, in the glory days of Barangay Ginebra, these were the two guys that carried it from that guard lineup. Yes, that guard lineup has thickened. There's more talent there. But then, if you want leadership, these are the two main guys, Mark Kagiwa, JJ Helterbrand, and they have the first two baskets for their team here in the second half. Here's Daniels going all the way, and they call the offensive foul. And Barangay Ginebra can't believe it. So does Daniels. Just his third personal foul. Watch this. Uh, you can see here that uh, Simpson was already bracing for the contact. And uh, he did get it uh, with, with that elbow and that, that arm. So good call by the referee. In the meantime, uh, Alaska getting a break here. Opportunity for Ginebra to inch in even closer. Here comes Denorio trying to break down the defense. Uh, <laughs> oh, and, and, and um, you know, Tim Cohn has a beef here, and he is right. If you're gonna look at this, this, if you're gonna look at, at our replay, there is second motion on the part of Ronald Tubin right in front of the referees, and that's why Tim Cohn is very upset. He, he has to protect his star players. Now let's take a look at that uh, replay. I think he wanted something more. Well, look at this. This is insane. You know, LA Tenoy is going to do a couple of stop and goes. This is the first stop and go, and then he's going to attack. Here's gonna, this is the foul right there, and this, is the, extra, the this is the extra motion right there. You see that left, left foot of Ronald Kubik going, trying to go in between the legs of LA Tenoy. That's what. Um, uh, Coach Tim Cohn was upset about. 